again, man, like I said, it's a pleasure, man, definitely to finally chop it up with you, man. Um, you know, before we talk about Jafia Life's music, man, let's talk about Jafia Life. Like, what's been going on? I know you've been away from the scene for a little while, but what's been going on in your life since the last album, Nazareth? Yeah, man, um, uh, just, just, just refocusing, man. I think that's, that's been the main thing. Um, just trying to get a, a proper gauge. Um, on what, you know, what God wants me to do in terms of music. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I think that for a long time, um, I've, I've done what has been politically correct to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, at least in, within Christendom, you know, um, and I think I've been trying to get a proper gauge on that so I can make a, um, you know, I can, I can give a, a good presentation when I do officially come back, like, you know, Nazareth, that that wasn't really my album, album, that was just something, you know, just to hold people over until the real album is, is ready. I guess, what is that process really like, you know, when you're trying to identify what Jafar Life music should be, you know, and and I guess not really conforming or, or doing what the people think that a Christian rapper should do. Like, how do you really find that? I mean, is it having conversations with ministers, pastors, friends, or is it really just looking at yourself from deep within? How do you really come up with the conclusion? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think that it's a, I think it's a variety of all of the above. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to, you know, different friends about it, of course. Um, I'm friends with a few different pastors, to whether they be, um, pastors that are youth pastors or pastors that have been like senior pastors and are like in their 40s or whatever like that. Like I've talked to different people who I'm just friends with too. And, um, you know, so stuff like that helps me. And then um, just really, really focusing on like the type of, like like the person that God created uh-huh. me to be. Right. Yeah. And and the more the more I think I come to terms with who God made me to be, I think I get a better grasp on what it is and how it is God wants me to, you know, present this this meal of music, for lack of a better expression or way to put it. Yeah, I think that's really good. You know, it's really like identifying your purpose. You know, I think right. we, we teach people or we need to teach people more about you know, identifying your purpose. If you don't know exactly what that purpose is, you're not really exactly sure how you're supposed to reach these people or, you know, the, uh, the correct avenues yeah. to go. So that makes a lot of sense what you just said. Um, Definitely, man. Definitely. And you said that um, Nazareth wasn't like a, a real album, man. That was, I, I guess that was a, is a real good album just to be a throwaway. You know what I mean? I, I appreciate that. I mean, I appreciate it, man, because... Yeah, it, it it wasn't a real album. Um, I mean, it was a real album, but it wasn't the album that I've been putting my energies into. Uh-huh. Um, so it, it it had a few songs on there that people were very familiar with from just um, you know just being around on the internet, different places where they probably heard it. Um, and then there was some songs that were unreleased that they never heard that, that like me and you know some different people in my camp. We, we, were, we were confident enough in to release to the public. Um, the funny thing is, um, but then we then we put another new, brand new song on there, which was Does Anybody Know? And we shot a video out of LA for that. Okay. But, um, you know, yeah, man, I mean, it, it, it's, it's just been a cool process. But the interesting thing that a lot of people don't know is um, I was going to actually give Nazareth away for free. As like a free house. Wow. Just to let people, just because, like, that's just the type of person I am. You know, like, I got so many, I got so many songs recorded, it's kind of like, you know, that's just how I am, man, you know, so, um, and, you know, I, I kind of rethought it when, when, you know, some different people in my camp kind of brought some things to my attention, so uh, we decided to just release it um, for retail. But, yeah, but, yeah, man, Westside Pharmacy is, is on deck. It's almost finished cooking up. I'm excited about it. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be real interesting. 
I guess since you went ahead and, and mentioned the album, the, the West Side Pharmacy, um, I guess how is what is the exact meaning behind that name? I know we all know that a pharmacy, you go to a pharmacy right. to, you know, to get your healing or get your prescription or whatever it is, but what's the exact right. meaning? How'd you come up with that? Um, yeah, man. Uh, initially, uh, I think that the, the meaning um, in its infancy stages was just, um, it was a dual meaning, you know, a meaning behind the West Side portion and then a, then a meaning behind the pharmacy portion. And when you bring them together, it was even a, a bigger uh, meaning, but um, the West Side portion was just me being from from West Philly and just being being sent unto the, the people who are like me. Uh-huh. Um, and then and then the, the pharmacy portion was just what I want to what I want to present them with, and this medicine, you know, just just coming from a perspective of you know um, looking at people who are unbelievers. You know, like they, they'll, they'll do things that unbelievers will do. You know, and a lot of times I've I've had one of my biggest pet peeves with with um you know some of my brothers and sisters in in, in Christianity is we we go into shock when we when we see them doing when we see non Christians doing non Christian things. Mm-hmm. And for me, I don't I really never got a good grasp on. Um, why why people would go into shock yeah. because of that, and then finding out why they go into shock from it, and then looking at that and saying, okay, well, now we find out why people are in shock when they see unchristian people do unchristian things. Now let let me address the non Christians and the Christians mm. because because if they're going into shock from seeing non Christians do non Christian things then the non-Christians aren't the only ones that need medicine. Mm, that's good. That's a good analyzation right there. So, yeah, it, it, it was it was just really a, a, that's really a big deal to me. Like, a, a very big deal to me, how how we respond. Like, I, I respond to the non-Christian. Like, I respond to the non-Christian philosophy. Like, as Christians, um, we quote a lot of scriptures um, that show us different things, but we don't really, we're not really living, like we, a lot of people are living, you know, not fornicating, um, um, guarding, guarding our tongues, different things like that, but there's some other pivotal things that I think we don't really focus on as a big portion of walking out Christianity. And, 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 and one of those things is how we, how we respond and in, in, when we're placed where the Great Commission is at the forefront, mm-hmm. you know, because our response to to, 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 to to the non-Christian is very important. If if we want them to become, if we if we want their non-Christianity to ever end, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like it... our our response to them is very pivotal. Yeah, because there's a lot of times where we as Christians can actually turn them off because of our response and us right, being so right. so judgmental. But like you said, yeah. like why why is there really a shock when an unsaved person is acting unsaved? It's kind of like saying, okay, yeah. why does a dog bark? <laughs> you know, right? Because it's it's supposed to. It's it's not supposed to do anything different. You know, right? Until it's actually right. taught something. You know, so I understand exactly what you're saying then. I guess it's good to hear you say that because you would never get that just from looking at the name, you know? Right, 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 right. Absolutely, and that's. I think that that's that's a good. I think that's a good. Uh, that could be a good thing because, from a creative standpoint, those are some of the things that have always pulled me in. Like even like with the movie that just came in, came out by uh, uh, Steven Spielberg um, called Super Eight, like. Uh-huh. They, they, you saw the previews, but you on the, in the trailer, but you still didn't really know why they called it Super Eight. Yeah, I'm thinking, is it about the hotel, the motel, or or, or what, is it something deeper? <laughs> <laughs> me, me too, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, when you, when, I didn't see it yet, but I had some some, some friends of mine that saw the movie, um, and they told me I was like, you know, I, I asked them 
I said, don't don't give the movie away to me, but <laughs> yeah. like, if you could tell me why they called it Super Eight, like I mean, I'm just curious. And they told me why, and it, you would never know that by the by the title of the movie. That's that's why they called it Super Eight. So I think that's something that draws people in. It's something that draw me in. I know that, and I think that I, I think I, I I work off of things that interest that interest me that I think would, would pull other people in that are like me uh-huh. and, and it's, 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 they crave they crave good art yeah um, I'm, I'm a real big I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of like arts arts and culture and different cultures and just you know how they how we meet how we how arts and cultures meet with faith Mm-hmm. You know, so um, I'm, I'm just a real big fan of, of different poets and, and, and filmmakers and and, um, and, and painters and, and um, just just literary writers that were that were Christians, but they weren't really um, they didn't just mainly just write Christian literature. I guess you would say. Uh-huh. You know, um, just like C.S. Lewis, the, the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, it's one of his best friends was J.R. Tolkien that did Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were both believers. Um, so, you know, even even somebody like Bach, I think Bach, I think Bach was a Christian. I think. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But mm-hmm. but I, I think that he was a Christian. And, you know, those are, those are people that I look up to in terms of arts and culture and music. And they were believers, but they were, but they were pivoted. Well, their work was pivoted in arts and culture, it wasn't pivoted in Christian arts and culture. It was in it was in arts and culture. It was it was it was meeting people where they were. It was to me. It was it was it was a, 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 a aspect of what the Great Commission can look like. Uh-huh. You know, because really the Bible talks about being in the world but not of the world. Yeah. You know, I don't know how else. I don't know how how better to be in and and, and not of. Than to actually be in it and not be of it, um, yeah. you know. So, um, so yes, yeah, that's 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 just one of the reasons um, I pick. Like a lot of my titles are like that, though. Just even when it comes to even song titles or or albums, like 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 Hell's Diary, The Hill and LP. That was my second album. Like that was that was something that probably nobody would dare name their album that's a Christian have a title of Hell in it. You know, so I just I just felt that it was true to life, of true to life, as far as what I was going through at the time, and I thought that people would connect with it, and I mean, thankfully they, they did. Yeah, that's just a, a great way of thinking, you know, and like you said, being in tune with these different cultures and these different medias, it, it just makes you more inquisitive and it makes you a thought provoking rapper and it gives you more material and make, gives you more understanding of, of about about the world itself, you know? Um and yeah. not and not and being it, and not being labeled in one little box, you know? Right. And then it makes and then it makes the non Christian it raises eyebrows for the non Christian who's just, you know, like into this stuff that's dope. Yeah, because you know, it's something it's like, different. Yeah, it's just like they don't know it's a Christian album. Like, if you hear that title, you're not going to think, oh, that's a gospel album. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a non-Christian, you're just going you're gonna to want to know what it's about, too. So I think that, um, I mean, the Bible says a wise man wins souls. So I think that I try to I try to use these pivotal scriptures that show, that, that paint a picture of how, how you can actually, um, you know, Put flesh on the Great Commission mm-hmm. and make it come alive, and I think that just using wisdom and being creative isn't a sin. Well, I say that I don't feel I know that being creative is not a sin. Most of. So I think that the more creative we are, and this is not me just saying, how can I come up with something that's just so creative that the non-Christian would would buy into it or buy it? It's it's actually how I just happen to be. And I just and I just say I'm already like this. I'm just gonna. This is just gonna be my my presentation. And the best part about it is I didn't have to c- contrive anything intent around it. I'm already naturally like this. 
Yeah, it's it just being yourself and, and doing it your way. Like the Bible says that we are fishers of men, you know, so you have a different bait. Every fisherman doesn't use a worm, you know, some fishermen right. use another fish. So it's just your form of bait to actually draw the people into it. So uh, yeah. I, I, I appreciate that that type of thinking. Um, but moving moving on a little bit, um, think about the name title that you said, like West Side Pharmacy and, and relating to a certain group of people. It's obvious in your music that you definitely rep the streets and you rep the hood very, very well. On the other side of that, I, I guess, have you heard any, or or how does the, the suburbs, I guess you would say, how would they relate to to your music? Do they actually embrace your music as well, or how how does that work? I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I mean, most of the people who um, reach out to me or that I see at my shows or different places, I mean, they're not hood people. Uh-huh. Like, they're just people who, they're just people. You know, like, I, I really feel like, <clears throat> like, like if, if people said I didn't rep the hood, I would be okay with that. Uh-huh. I'd be totally okay with that. I think I'm just a representative. I think I'm just a representative <clears throat> at the core of who I am. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just a representative of, of 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 people. You know, so I think that my music speaks to everybody. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you like fifty cent or you like you like uh I don't know you too. You know, if you if you like, you know, grid repair, if you like different, you know, indie, indie, indie rock, like, you know. So I, I guess it's kind of saying like, okay, that's where you come from. So for instance, if we'll just say for, for, I'm going to use, for lack of a, I'll just say a person who comes from Detroit, you know, a basketball player who comes from Detroit and he goes and he plays for, he ends up making it to the NBA and he plays for the Lakers. So he's uh-huh. coming from Detroit but he's now being seen on this large scale. And mm-hmm. even though he's in Los Angeles repping the Lakers, he's still repping Detroit. So he comes from Detroit, but the people around the world, they still receive him very well, but he's still going to mm-hmm. rep Detroit. So that's kind of like you, you coming from the hood, you yeah. rep the hood, but people all over the world, they still receive you. Yeah, yeah, I've repped, but the hood isn't the only thing I rep. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Okay. Like the hood is where I'm from. Like I don't just rep the hood though. Like I rep with, I'm just I'm telling you, I represent people, period. I got like you. where I'm from, like like for me for me where I'm from is just where I'm from. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't like I can make an album that the hood doesn't get into. That's just because I'm I'm who I am is bigger than the hood. Mm-hmm. You know, since I'm from the hood, like I, like the hood, like the hood isn't the hood. That, that doesn't define me. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't carry that responsibility of repping the hood on my shoulder. You know, I think that, I think that, I don't, I don't think that me repping the hood would actually do anything significant for the hood. You don't think you repping the hood would draw people from the hood possibly to you or to Christ? No. Like I don't I don't know how you like I don't I don't need to rep the hood to bring people from the hood to Christ. Cuz I don't I don't rep the suburbs and I bring people from the suburbs to Christ. So I don't I don't have to walk around with that weight of responsibility of repping the hood. I'm from the hood. So any, I, I don't really rep the hood. I'm from the hood. Like so, where I'm from is in my DNA. So by default, the hood gets rep because that's where I'm from. <laughs> like I, I'm a, like, it's more to me than just being from the hood. And I and I and I really I really fight to make that clear with people because people would people there's certain people out there that would that would that would just jump on. The idea of being able to just keep me in that box mm-hmm. and keep and keep my music in that box, um, you know, just for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Some I'm aware of and some I'm not aware of yet. So for me, whether I rep the hood or not, when I make an album, it's not the agenda for me making an album. 
you know, I pr- I, through prayer, I pray that people, period, would be impacted by it. But me repping the hood, like, again, like I say again, like, by me repping the hood, I don't think that does anything for the hood. And, and nor do I, nor do I deem it res- necessary for me to rep the hood because I'm from the hood. There's, I mean, there's many people who are from the hood that don't rep the hood that are successful people. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't really saying that you have to rep the hood to to be successful or anything, but I do believe even if your intentions is not to come out and rep the hood, that you can still draw those people to Christ. Just like you said, you don't have to rep the hood to draw somebody from the suburbs, but in the same way, you can still rep the hood and you can draw people into Christ because those people know you, those people see you, and they're like, okay, Jafai, he used to do this. But he doesn't do that right. anymore. He's setting a standard, so I can follow him because he made it, yeah. so I can make it too. So in that right, sense, right. you can draw people because you're setting an example. So that's all I was really saying um, about about a comment that I made. So I understand exactly where you're coming from at the same time too. No doubt, no doubt. Um, but also too, I, I, I think I, I guess music, music have you know different sounds. You have the hip hop sound, you have like the pop sound, you have the gritty uh-huh. sound, and some of you not a lot of it, but some of your music does have that I guess that that gritty that gritty feel. It kinda reminds me of like a, a mob deep um of some uh-huh. sort when I listen to it. Um so I guess what 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 album reminds you of Mob Deep? Like the the Nazareth, the Na- some songs on Nazareth, the sound kinda reminds me of not Mob Deep. The first time I listened to it that's what the vibe I was getting. Really? The, the sound, wow. the sound to me sonically, sound like that. Um, that's, that's interesting. I know everybody definitely has a, a, a different opinion, but that's what I got off of it, and that's what, and that's why I really kind of liked it personally because I didn't hear any other Christian artists sounding like that. And Jafar Life mm-hmm. to me has a very a distinct sound. Like there are certain beats right. that I hear, and like he would never rhyme on that type of beat. He would never touch that beat because it's not his style. So my question to you is, Westside Pharmacy is it going to be some of the same production, same producers that was on Nazareth, or is it different? Are you doing something different with your sound? Even if you doesn't think it sounds like Mob Deep, like me, um, are you doing something different? Or are you staying the same? Um, I think I think it's a little bit of both, man. I think at the core. I'm staying the same, absolutely, absolutely, definitely. But um, I think, I think I'm, I'm, like, I have, like, I'm, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm, I'm into innovation. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really, I really, I'm into. I think, I think at the core, I'm really into growth. You know, and, and maturity, just maturing as a person. Gotta you know, and, and and really just growing up. You know, whether it be in my personal life, just growing up. Um, and addressing things that need to be dealt with so I can grow up more. Or even in the studio, I like to make music and come up with different things that, you know, would just not really be reaching to sound like something that I want, but really just expressing my growth. So I think that from that aspect, it will be different. I think every one of my albums was different than the, than the last one, than yeah. the prior one. Like, every album I came out with, was different than the album that came out before that. Like when you look at when you, if, I don't, I'm not sure how far back you go. Um, you follow my music, but my first album, well, it wasn't even an album. It was a EP. It was about six songs called Pages of Life. That that came out, and people were saying that sounds like like my people Nas. And then when Hell's Diary came out, people were loving that too, but. It, it didn't sound anything like Stages of Life. Uh-huh. Like it was, it was, it, it was, it was almost the diametrically different than Stages of Life. So, and then you got, after that, Fountain of Life, which sounds totally different than Alan Garden. Uh-huh. And then you got Nazareth, that sounded different than all of them. It's kind of like a, a mixture of all of them together. Uh-huh. You know, so... But um, yeah, for, for this project, man, yeah, I'm I'm definitely trying to really, really, you know, just express where I'm at musically right now. 
Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just hoping that people. I mean, I, I got a good idea that you know people that follow me will, will continue to follow me with this new project. I think that I think a lot of people are going to be shocked, um, just musically. Uh, well, not even musically, just like lyrically, like where I'm at lyrically, um, just in terms of my honesty and you know transparency and um, my upfrontness and um, and my content and. And, you know, I've, I've really been working on my craft to, to be a better, to be a better rapper, to be a better MC, a better artist. Mm-hmm. And I think that this album is definitely going to reflect it. Definitely, man. Well, you dropped the track a few weeks ago, Live from the Pharmacy. Definitely, that was a, a, a dope track. Is that actual track going to be on the album, too? Or was that just kind of like a, a, a promo track you was giving to the people? Man, that's that's just that's just a promo that I wanted to give the people. Um, yeah, man. So we 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 released that as a free download. We actually got a video coming that we shot for it, and um, then we're going to release the official single or singles after that. And um, it should be another video coming for the official single, and then um, some other promo video stuff and you know some cool stuff that's going to be coming after that too. So. But yeah, like that, that that's just like something I wanted to give to people just just because I, I think that people deserve I, I just I think people deserved it for waiting for so long for me to put this album out. I mean it's the least I could could have done. Yeah, it definitely was a dope record, man. I kinda wanted one more verse, I man. I was waiting for that third verse to come in. <laughs> yeah, and that's you know what, man, and it's funny you said that because that's one of the things that kinda gave me the, the enough confidence to actually um, put it out as a free download because it wasn't really a complete song. Uh-huh. You know, it didn't even have a hook on it. Yeah. But that's you know just the way, like, that's the way to keep up the anticipation or to keep the people yearning for more. That's that's the proper way to do it. Yeah, you know, it didn't have a hook on it. So it was just like, it was just unconventional. It was just like against the grain as far as I, I felt, you know. So I just was like, man, I think this is the type of stuff that people are, are waiting for and wanting um, even in secular, you know, music, um, you know, secular music has a ton of consumers and supporters that are Christian, you know, so they, even the Christian consumers that like secular music, their favorite artists usually, they love when they drop something that's just unconventional that was unexpected. And yeah. I think that that's what this was. It was a picture of that very thing. And we, we just were like, you know what, let's just release it like this. And we're going to shoot a visual to it. Give that to them too. So. Yeah, I ooh, personally, ooh, dope, yeah, I personally just like to see artists do different things. You know, getting away from the conventional format. You know, do your chorus, sixteen bars, chorus, sixteen bars, chorus. You know, it's just do something different, change it up here and there. So not to even throw in um, a chorus w- was fine, and just two bars. You were setting the tone. You had a purpose for it. So um, I-, I think that right. was definitely good. Um, can you can you kind of give us a, a sneak peek or Give us the the title of one of the singles that's coming out. Uh, see, that's the thing. We're not even sure what's what's going to be the next single. Okay. Um, a, 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 some, most of the records, I mean, the people in my camp that, that heard the project, that you know, like everything that's been completed so far, like half of the songs that I don't want to be single to be singles. They're like, yo, that's that's a dope single, <laughs> and, and I'm and I'm like, nah, that's just an album cut. Yeah, and they like, I'm telling you, that's a single, like that's crazy, and I'm, and I'm like, that's what's up, but I'm not dropping that as a single. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like I know what I want this single to look, feel, and sound like. Uh huh. Hey. Smell like <laughs> everything, <laughs> like. <laughs> Hey, whatever it is, I know it's going to come out fire, so we definitely it's can't gonna, wait. And it's going to be funky, yeah. <laughs> so, it's going to stink. Uh, well, can, but, you, um, can you let us know anything yeah. about um features? You got any special features that's going to be on the album? You know what? I do. I, I do. I, I got some interesting features, man, that I think that um, it's going to be interesting. I think people are going to be surprised you know, by some of the features. I can't. As much as I want to tell some of them, uh-huh. I, I can't. I can't. Yeah, I just, I just don't want to give it away. And then, and then I still got to send a couple 
tracks out to a couple other people. So, you know, just just making sure they actually are on the song before I say they're on the song. Uh huh. You know, but but I got but I got some people who um, you know, some people I've been a fan of like for years, and, and they reached out to me and was like, "Yo, I'm a fan of your music," and I'm like, "Whoa!" And and so and that may have been like almost a year ago, maybe. Okay. Like some of those people have been reaching out maybe almost a year ago, so I've had a, I've had enough time to actually kind of talk to them and get to know them and see what's the best type of track they even send them, uh-huh. you know. And we have more of a rapport where it's just not like, oh, you dope, I'm, you think I'm dope, I think you dope, let's just do a record. Uh-huh. Like that's that's cool. I mean, if that's somebody's method. I can't really say say anything against that method. I don't think it's I don't think it's wrong. To, to uh, implement that method, but that's just not the method I usually go by. I like I like to be more relational with people, just to see like the type of person they are, and I think that even gives me a better gauge on what type of song I want to send them. You know, so but yeah, yeah like this, it's gonna be some it's gonna be some cool features on here. Um, I'm excited. I can't wait to. Cause this is this is the first project I'm putting out that really has features on it that are outside of my camp. You know, so the pressure is on for me. The pressure is definitely on for me because if I'm doing songs with different artists that have a following and people are fans of, uh-huh. I better come. I better. I just. I just ought to come correct. Yeah, I better yeah. come correct. It's mandatory. I better come correct. It's, it's no. It's no getting around it. Mm. Well, so what, I, I guess you saying that too. It made me think about the whole the whole malice situation. You know. Um, Say what? I said when you when you saying that and talking about people and it, it really made me think about Malice. Um, I know he gave you a I guess a stamp of approval or well not really a stamp of approval but he kind of gave you a dope cosign, you know, early on in the year uh, about your music. I guess how does that feel? You know, just to see that I, I know he's making a change. We did an interview with him early in the year and but how does it still feel like to, to for people like Malice or even the secular um, genre of music, those people seeing, listening to your music and seeing how powerful it is, how does that kind of feel to you? I mean, it, it, it feels, it feels dope, man. I mean, I, I can't front. It feels dope. I've been a, I've been a fan of, um, of Clips um, ever since they came out. I've been a fan of Clips. Um, I've been, I've been a fan of Malice, Pusher, um, Pharrell, you know, that, that whole family and that whole, that whole camp. You know everything they was doing coming out of VA, and you know, I, I, it, it was dope, man, for him to to really share with me how he felt about my music. Yeah. Like that was cool, especially because I told I told another artist this this part of my camp. Um, I said, man, I said, I said, Mal, I, I'm, and this is before I even spoke to Malice or knew Malice. I told somebody else, I said, man, I would love to be able to reach Malice because I see that he's trying to make. He's making an uh, effort to, to to really uh, put God in his music more, and it seems like it's it's because he's put God in his life more. Uh-huh. I was, I said, I know it's got to be hard, you know, for him to to be in that community and and and, and essentially almost be alone, like be a loner, like really not have nobody. That really understands where you're coming from. They're almost like, yo, you, you change it, like you know, like you know. And then you got a pocket of people who who are feeling it that probably are non-believers that are like on the cusp of their salvation. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And it's like for me, I was like, y'all would really love to be somebody who he could have in his corner, just to like give him some jewels and some truth that there wasn't that wasn't just fluff. Like there's a bunch of fluff that you see on TV and, you know, like different, um, nothing against TVN, you know, but different people that you may see on Christian networks preaching, this is preaching a bunch of just stuff that's not even a gospel, really, mm-hmm. you know, so, um, and then to get to, get to meet him, talk with him, develop a friendship, and now him actually be like a brother is, is dope, and, and to see the people that, that he's a fan of that are preachers, a pretty solid dude. Uh-huh. So, like, it just helps me sleep at night to know that who he's getting fed by, even through the media, 
like Christian media, he, he's getting fed and there's a fan of people, a part of Christian media that are pretty solid. Yeah. So, so that, but, but aside from that, though, um, you know, as far as musically, though, man, I, it's, it's, it's been dope. I mean, he's one of my favorite rappers, especially with, like, how he's coming now, like, just putting, like, just, just the word and, and everything he's putting in his music now. It's just, it's just so much more. It's, it's hard. I mean, to me, he's more harder than he ever been. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, that's oh, dope so, that y'all yeah. even took it to that level, you know, because y'all established yeah. that relationship. So it became more than, I guess, more than just a, um, a comment that he made or more than just a statement about your music. Y'all got a chance to build on a bigger level. So that's awesome that you can even connect with him. And like you said, we can't walk in this thing alone. He have all these other people around him, probably, you know, majority of them probably unsaved, you know what I mean? So just to have that connection, yeah, yeah. like you said. So that's that's awesome. Absolutely, man. We, we locked in. Me and Malice are locked in. He just texted me. Actually, it's funny you bring him up because he just texted me earlier and gave me his new number. So it's like it's, that's just confirmation, like, that he wants to continue to to, to build and stay in, in communication. And, you know, he's enjoying the conversations that we have just as much as I am. So yeah, he I'm, I'm blown away by it. Yeah, he definitely has a, a awesome heart, man. So... I know I, I pray for him and I pray that everything work out because he definitely has his says on his shoulders and he is trying to make a change, you know. He's trying to set the right example for the, for the youth. He has a big thing for the youth, so. Yeah, yes. he, he is, man. He's, he's, a, he's a real deal. He's a real deal. All right, man. Well, it looks like my, my clock's saying we eight minutes over. I know I was trying to keep it at 30 minutes, um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring this thing to a close. Um, One of the questions, though, that – um. One of the people asked, they asked about a Hartsville mixtape. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is there any, you have any update for man about a Hartsville mixtape? Is that coming? Is it a no-go? What's up with that? Um, here's, a, here's the interesting part, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 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 and I'm going to answer the question. I don't want to act like I'm just, like, dodging the question because I'm definitely going to answer that question. But it's interesting to me. It's dope, though, but it's interesting to me how it's, like, I, I was talking about that project, about, you know, just I released the idea for that project about maybe two and a half, almost three years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And and now I'm, I'm focused in on Westside Pharmacy. And I was I would think that people would just say, what's up with Westside Pharmacy? <laughs> like, if that's, the, if, if that's the topic of discussion as far as, like, where I'm at musically, I would think that people would just be like, okay, you know, let's get Westside Pharmacy. But it's just interesting to me that, a pro like, I haven't even talked about that mixtape in over a year, if not almost two years. Mm. And and people are still asking about it. So, you know, I guess I, guess I got to put it out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it might be another I guess one I just got to put it out. Another one of them throwaways, yeah, so. like Nazareth. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but, but come out of class. I got some. I got some of them too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, definitely, man. Like I said, I appreciate the time and appreciate the the interview. Definitely was an awesome interview. I know the people are going to get a lot out of this. I'm going to get it out as soon as possible, man. So, I definitely appreciate you taking the time, man. It was a blessing. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you, dude.